Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You know that I went with the Ruger uh, 6.5 Ruger Predator and um, and it was kind of the plain Jane rifle. No paint job or anything on that. All right, so on the rifle going from the barrel to the butt of the gun, I've got a, um, on the barrel of the gun, I've got a Surefire Pro Comp muzzle brake um, and it works well for this rifle. Um, I've already shot the rifle a few times and we'll kind of go over a target that I've got, but it really takes a lot of the jump out of the rifle. It was comfortable to shoot. It did move up off the target when I shot the rifle. However, it more or less jumped to the left and right and not so much up and down. So that worked out well. It was really comfortable to shoot and wasn't bad. Easy on the shoulder, and uh, but of course it's loud. It's a muzzle brake. We all know that. Coming down through here, we've got a Harris bipod. I like running a short bipod. I don't like the long ends on the, on the barrel. Um, it works great for what we're gonna do with it. So I'll be able to lay prone with it and shoot longer ranges. And uh, the only thing I would, I, I'm kind of interested in doing, and, and it's just because I've had this bipod for quite some time, will be adding a Picatinny rail to this swivel to where it's got a QD, a quick detach for the bipod where I can take it off really quick or put it on. Because let's face it, there'll be some instances, maybe if I'm hunting out of a tree stand where I'm not gonna use a bipod. So I'll probably take that off and then just use it with a bear gun or something like that. But anyway, that's kind of um, just, just something I'm thinking about later on to be able to, to get for the rifle. Looking at the scope, I went with an SWFA. I've done a lot of reviews on scopes. I didn't want anything that didn't make sense for a budget rifle, meaning I'm spending more than $1,000 for a scope for a $400 rifle. Um, that makes sense in some aspect of it. If you're trying to shoot competitive long range, understand that. But again, just trying to be under a thousand bucks for the whole entire thing. SWFA, I've looked at a ton of reviews, like I said, and it seems like it's a mil spec scope. There's nothing fancy, similar to the rifle, but it does the job. Um, I know that Cyclops, uh, and I'll put that link below back on his YouTube channel, he has a ton of reviews on the SWFA scopes, and they're really detailed. It goes into a lot of detail about the scope, and so I highly suggest going there if you have any more questions about particularly the scope. Um, I'm running butler caps on the end. Uh, I used to run butler caps all the time, and I do like the caps. It keeps the glass clean. It keeps anything from going in and scratching the glass. They're super simple to use. The only thing uh, I have a little concern with, and it's just because I, on my 7 mag, I, I kind of went this route, is running a sock over top. So I'll probably end up doing that, just running a sock over top, but I wanted to, and so I just pull the sock off and use it to shoot. But with the butler caps, it works great. It's easy to shoot, they're easy to function, and um, no problem at all. So that's what I'm running for the caps. For the rail, the Ruger American Predator does come with the rail, but um, that rail is not actually a full Picatinny for a 20 MOA. So I took that off and I bought the, um, and I bought the EGW 20 MOA Picatinny rail. Um, adding that extra 20 is gonna be able to get a little more distance out of that and it fits well, it holds it low. These are worn 30 millimeter low rings. So you can see here, whenever I'm holding the rifle up, my cheeks here, it is a straight shot into the glass. Whereas if I had medium or high rings, that scope's gonna be elevated to here, here, and it's gonna cause me to bring my, my chin even further off the rifle. I wanna lay it against there, I wanna be comfortable, and it is right there, just perfect down through there and makes it super, super simple and easy to fire the weapon. The last thing that I added to the rifle, and I actually just kind of stole the, the bipod and the sling off my other rifle because I love this sling so much. Um, it's actually called like, they, they call it a, America's best sling, but this is the Ultra Flex Firearm Sling from Slogan Outdoors. So it took me a minute to go back and actually find where I had that video of what brought my attention to the sling, but it is awesome. Um, it's a rubberized material, and what I like about it, I mean, obviously it fits just like any other sling, and it doesn't go anywhere. It stays on your shoulder, super comfortable, and the cool part about it is that if you're up in the mountains going, 
So you put this on your, your shoulders, just like a backpack, and it rides all day long. It's not going anywhere. Um, if you're up mountain hunting or something like that, it can still run with the backpack. So with my day pack, I can still utilize this gun the same exact way. Um, and the other thing is that usually if I do have my day pack, I have a, um, a different kind of holster for my weapon that holds it out front rather than behind me. But if you're, you're day hunting and you can run a small day pack or coyote hunting or something like that, I mean, this thing is just super comfortable. And so it fit perfect with this type of rifle. Um, all in all, the rifle, uh, I'm not sure how much it weighs. We had that scale, don't we? Okay. I'm curious, because I really don't know. All right, so pulling up with the scale, the whole entire rifle comes in at nine and a half pounds. So some may look at that and say, well, that's way too heavy for a mountain gun or something like that. But you got to think the bipod, I'll probably take off if I'm running up and down the mountain. It's just added weight that I could really get by without. I can set this on top of my bag. But even the nine and a half pounds, I've been on both sides of this. And it's a battle I had to cross uh, just to determine what I really like as a rifle on weight distribution. So used to, I always wanted the lightest weight possible on a rifle. And I always thought that I liked that. The only thing is that there's not much stability if you're trying to freehand something, shooting, or if you're shooting it and you're laying down, it's not as heavy on the end, so it's gonna pop off the target even more. Um, but when it comes to longer range shooting, I had a different rifle that weighed about 10 and a half pounds naked, nothing on it. So on the end of it, it weighed almost 13 pounds. And that was too heavy for me to do what I wanna do. Um, pulling it up and shooting it, but I did notice that that was the best gun I've ever freehand shoot in my entire life because I knew in my head like once I get it up It's gonna stabilize itself pretty good and shoot and make a good shot So this time I thought you know what I'll go to the middle of the road. I've had a six and a half pound rifle I've had a 12 13 pound rifle Let's just try to do just shy of 10 pounds and see what we've got and this gun works great again Like the first review it doesn't have a bull barrel a heavy barrel. It's kind of their medium size barrel um, it's a 5824 thread, but uh, it holds the weight out front very well, especially with the bipod. When I pick the gun up, it's just super smooth. So that's the gun. Um, I went ahead just because I couldn't take it and sided the weapon in. Once I got everything, the paint job done and all the, the accessories on the gun and the bullets that I had available, are the Hornady Precision Hunter 6.5 Creedmoor 143 grain ELDX. So this is the bullet. These are the same bullets that I had, same box of bullets that I had when I had my shot my old Creedmoor. So took it to uh, out to the range. I had a, uh, I got it bore sided, and then once I finished the bore siding, took it out to the range, and then we had. This was the first shot, so I'm aiming for this dot here. First shot, obviously high and left, so put it down some. That's the second shot, here's the third shot. Once I got the shot, third shot, it's okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, do a circle. So I put this circle up here, and then I did a four shot group. So this is my four shot group, and it's hard to see, but all those holes are touching one another. And to me, at 100 yards, this is a half MOA, no doubt, in the world. Um, and I'll put a picture below, or I'll add a picture in there of, of me with the tape measure on it, but half MOA for a $450 rifle at 100 yards, uh, I'll take that all day long. So all it does is just build the confidence for me. Um, I know if I have a gun and it's the most expensive, nicest rifle out there and I shoot it and I just don't have that confidence, I'll never have that. You know, I, It doesn't matter to me as long as it functions properly, and this gun does, or it has so far. Um, the bolt was smooth. I really, I didn't have an issue with the zipper sound at all. Um, of course, with the muzzle brake, I've got my ears in anyway, so you don't even hear it. So it kind of irrelevant from that aspect of it. And then, um, but it, I love it. So far, it's been great. That's the 100 yards. Now, who knows what can happen later, but, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks.